And hello, this is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor, and this is my podcast. It's a beautiful day out today. I hope everyone's having a great morning. Hope you have your coffee. Hope you have your cocoa. Whatever you're drinking this morning, as long as it's not strong stuff, you know what I mean. Let's get started on this day. Listen, I wanted to come back and talk to you just a little bit because, you know, we're in this election season. We're not supposed to be, but we're in this election season. And we have a whole bunch of things being said, a whole bunch of lies, a whole bunch of nonsense, a whole bunch of pointing fingers, blaming everything else. We have this issue at the moment where Trump is pointing fingers at Ron DeSantis at, on how he handled COVID. And we have all this stuff being said. I mean, it's nonstop. If you look at this morning's tweets, it's nonstop about what's happening between that argument between both of these candidates for president. Now, I want let's just be honest with this whole thing. Let's go back and explore this history, shall we? Because I was in, I was in Florida. I was living in Florida when we went into lockdown. And as a business, it hurt me because I had just moved to Florida. I was just getting started in Florida. And all of a sudden, we will go into complete lockdown. I had to sh- shut down my business for a few months. And I could not understand the reasoning why. Well, at that time, you have to understand that there was a lot of bad data out there. If you look at, at the numbers that were being projected on COVID at that time, it didn't make sense. The data did not make sense. It were at, at 0.001% of the entire nation being infected at that time. But all of these policies were being put into place by the CDC and, and Dr. Fauci under the Trump administration. So what happened is that the governors had to go, had to make their decisions based upon what the CDC was telling them on how to handle this this virus. And so that's what happened. Under the direction of Trump CDC to the governors and to everybody in the United States, there were some very specific rules on how we had to handle this COVID virus. And that's what happened. And so things were shut down. Uh, decisions were made. But then as we begin to understand a little bit more about the COVID thing and how it wasn't working, it wasn't making sense of what the CDC was telling us and what the Trump administration was telling us, that uh, Ron DeSantis Sa- started to open things up. Now the other issue on the side of this is that at that time, Trump was negotiating, <clears throat> helping to establish a vaccine that would help us on this virus. And so he was pushing hard, and everybody was supposed to take this vaccine. Everybody was supposed to take it. No proof that it worked. In fact, as time went on, we found out that it didn't work. So let's just sum it up in one big whooping thing. What Ron DeSantis did and what Donald Trump did, both did not work. So let's stop pointing fingers at each other because that was a bad time in history that bad decisions were being made by everybody in this nation based upon what Dr. Fauci was putting out there. So let's stop this nonsense. So if we really want to get into what's going to affect your life or what's going to affect your, if you have a business you have to look at what are these policies that these two men are are talking about today. How is it going to fix what's wrong in America at the moment? So this, this uh, election is not based upon what happened with COVID. It has to do with the now and the future of what policies are going to be stated and that we can understand and which we can understand. Uh, and uh, make our decisions on how to vote. It's based on the policies of all the candidates out there. Because let's, let, let me tell you, as we are working on this debt ceiling thing, you're probably thinking, well, no, that doesn't bother, that doesn't involve me. Well, it does involve you. Because anything that 
the Congress passes affects our personal finance in some way or another. So it makes a big, huge dent in our lives depending on what they're voting for. Every time that Congress votes on something, it affects our lives. It affects our personal finances, our banking, our employment, it, it, our inflation. It, it affects our taxes that we have to pay out. It affects us in some way. So we have to be very concerned about what is happening with this debt reduction. I'm um, not debt reduction, but this debt uh, ceiling that is being considered by both parties. They're in negotiating at the moment. But what are they negotiating? Because we know there needs to be cuts. So if you look at the at the policies of all of the candidates, look to see how that's going to affect you. How is it going to affect your family? How is it going to affect your job? How is it going to affect your business that you own? How is it going to affect your religious liberty? Look at these policies. And then if you vote for that individual that you felt that the policy was best suited for you and you see it going into another direction, then you challenge that president or you challenge that member of Congress or Senate or even in your school boards. Challenge them based upon the policies that they promised you. And that's how we get to a better America. You and I during this election, have got to be very careful about who we are voting for and that their policies and how their policies will affect you and me. That is the crux of this whole election. Forget about the name-calling. Forget about the pointing of fingers. Forget about all this nonsense. Look at the policies of these presidential candidates. The other issue that we're having is that we're having a lot of woke companies trying to push social policy upon their customers. And that comes from what is called the ESG. You know what that ESG stands for? They get points if they meet certain criteria of this of this new plan that's out there. <clears throat> it's called the ESG plan. And what it what it is is it stands for environmental, social, in corporate governance. It's also known as environmental social government governance is a framework designed to be embedded into an organization strategy that considers the needs and ways in which to generate value for organized stakeholders. Basically what that is is that as we see in happening in Target, in Bud Light, Miller Light, Uber, everything. They have all of these ESG things that they need to fulfill. And one of them is diversity. So they try to push at the moment this LGBT or trans diversity. And they're trying to push it onto their consumers. And as you can see, Target is in a lot of trouble at the moment because they are pushing their agenda of LGBT and trans merchandise upon the families and children. And that is ESG. That's basically what it is, is to push these political agendas. Now, it's not ethical. It's not morally right. And it certainly is not what the consumers of Target and these other companies want. They don't want to be pushed on this political theme every single day. When you walk into, I remember at one point in time, Starbucks was supporting this Black Lives Matter. So they were writing on their, on their coffee cups, BLM. And, so, and, and then they started writing, let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, black issues. People didn't want to go into a store and have to listen to politics. They went in there to get a cup of coffee, sit down, flip up their computer and begin working. Or just sit there and chat with a friend. Or just sit there and relax. But they were being pushed this political agenda, this ESG agenda. And so now all of these big companies are pushing their political and social uh, agendas up, uh, uh, down our throats. 
And you can see it, that's what's happened with Target. That's what's happened with Bud Light and all these other companies where they have pumped out these transgender merchandising uh, apparatuses or, or whatever you want to call it and pushed it down us. If you walked into a Target store, you literally saw LGBT clothing, trans clothing, designed for children and books designed for children and that's not right that is not the responsibility of any corporation to push that sexual thought process down parents uh throats it's just not right and so they're in trouble and they're losing their brand name they're losing their status and they're losing their clients their customers So we have gotten into this situation where ESG has been the focus of these big corporations because they all wanted to be fabulous and it made them look low and and disgusting. Family members and, and moms and dads going in shopping at Target did not want to see LGBT and trans clothing. Swimsuits where you tuck away the penis of children so that they appear to be female I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it is obnoxious. So, there's a boycott going on on this ESG company known as, as, uh, I I tell you, I think about it, and I'm very disgusted, and and I'm very concerned about America. Twitter was very woke. And look what it did. It literally destroyed the company. Now we have Target stores woke and just about ready because the CEO doesn't want to band and listen to what his clients, his customers are saying. So it becomes more woke. He doubles down. That doubling down will probably run them out of business if they don't be careful because more and more parents are saying, okay, we're going to boycott. And that seems to be the only way that companies change to the benefit of the consumer is by boycotting these ESG-driven companies. And we have to look at this very carefully because it affects us. It affects your family. It affects your children. It affects our consumer spending ability because companies become woke They become destructive. So, they're boycotted. Now, I haven't been to a Target store in many, many months, but in fact, it's been three years. Because when I, the last time I went to a Target was in, was in Florida when I lived there. So remember, let's end this right now so that we can go on with our lives and do our work and everything that the policies of all these presidential candidates out there is what we need to make our decision on. And I'm ignore all of this name-calling and stuff because it's just a waste of time. And yes, we do have to boycott individual stores that are going to be ESG-driven because it's destructive, and we don't want that. Listen, if you have any business questions, send it in to me at thebusinessadvisor at gmail.com. And if you would like to sit down with me uh, for consultation or advisory or coaching, and it's all confidential, go to my website and book online at www.lodge-co.com. Everybody go out and have a great day. Let's sit back, drink your coffee, let's listen to some music. Love you guys. Bye-bye.